In this video, three specialists discuss the treatment of unresectable stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer with a focus on stage 3A disease. At your institution, for patients diagnosed with unresectable stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer, how do you coordinate care? We have a team with a nurse practitioner as well as myself, and we screen all of our patients, all of our new visits, uh, within our building in our same practice. All stage three patients are presented at our interdepartmental tumor board. At our institution, it's very similar. All of our patients, especially our stage three, get presented at our multidisciplinary tumor board. And by seeing all of us, by the time we make our decision at our tumor board, we're ready to go with treatment. In my experience, it's very rare that a patient with 3A would start treatment without presentation at a tumor board. And that's because what's unresectable in one physician's eyes may be entirely resectable in another. What factors do you consider when determining whether a tumor is resectable? What I might do in a young, healthy patient is usually very different than what I might do in someone who's elderly or with a lot of comorbidities. In my experience, though, there are certain lines that most of us would say qualifies as unresectable disease. Things like bulky nodes, confluent lymph nodes, lymph nodes that encase mediastinal structures. I think there's a lot of subtlety in the conversation, and that's why patients should always be brought to a tumor board. Based on your experience, how would you treat a stage 3A patient with single station N2 nodal involvement? My sentiment is that most single station N2 disease is resectable, but that some might not be based primarily on tumor size and location. You could have a T4 peripheral tumor and perform a lobectomy, but you could have a T2 central tumor and need to perform a pneumonectomy. In my experience, we would probably do the lobectomy, but people who have N2 disease and require a pneumonectomy because they have a central lesion, those are really quite controversial, with a lot of surgeons, especially if the tumor is on the right side, opting to stay away from operating in that population. So I tend to refer stage three tumors that require a pneumonectomy for the definitive non-operative therapy, even if it's single station N2 disease. In general, I think single station N2 is controversial. So then you have to ask, is the patient a good candidate? Does the patient have good pulmonary function tests? In my opinion, that same patient with N2 disease without good pulmonary function tests or with other comorbidities is not a surgical candidate. And I would say for the most part with radiation treatment, patients that are on oxygen or have poor pulmonary function status actually can do fairly well with radiation. As long as they can relatively tolerate you know, walking and ambulating down the hall, we offer radiation with chemotherapy. Patients that have larger tumors, can barely walk, have poor performance status, those are the ones I get a little bit more cautious about offering concurrent chemo radiation. Now let's consider a particular patient with unresectable stage 3A non-small cell lung cancer. Since stage 3A is a broad description, how can we help community oncologists identify an appropriate patient for non-surgical curative intent treatment? In my opinion, one of the first things you need is a better description of the extent of the nodal involvement. This is one of the reasons that 3A is such a challenging disease state. So in my opinion, clear words that would tell the treatment team that the patients are non-surgical candidates are those that include bulky multistation N2 disease or confluent N2 disease, bulky N2 disease encasing airways and vascular structures. In my experience, even with bulky nodal disease, biopsy is important. One should never assume your nodes are cancer until someone has biopsied them. I find it worrisome that a lot of decisions are made based on PET scan alone and in the absence of mediastinal staging. You might just have a PET scan and then you may be surprised in the operating room. In my opinion, it's important to actually stage the mediastinum correctly based on size and location of lymph nodes. What advice would you give to help patients with unresectable stage three non-small cell lung cancer get through this treatment regimen? Communication is critical between all stakeholders, including patients, physicians, and nurses. So when we meet the patient for the first time, we're all on the same page, talking about the same process. I think it's our job as physicians to try and make the patients as enthusiastic as possible about their treatment. 
to tell them about each step as they go through it, to make sure they know the next step might be easier and coach them from the beginning about what the whole plan will look like. I don't think they like it when you sneak extra steps up on them at the end. I agree. And I think it's important to mention you're treating with curative intent. This is imperative, especially for the patients that are getting chemo radiation, because I think patients, when they hear that surgery is off the table, they feel like that's the only curative intent. And I think it's important to emphasize that chemo radiation is still curative intent treatment for stage three. Look for other episodes from TOPS that highlight practical perspectives in managing lung cancer.